Hello Wonder Weavers, I hope that you are well. It's been a busy week. Uh, I finished the, the third piece or the third artwork for the Art of May art challenge. It was a bit of a frustrating experience. The prompt was um, berries, bunnies, basket. And I haven't really painted bunnies or rabbits before so I, I looked at a couple of reference photos and of course it always takes time to to help the hands become familiar with with whatever subject you're drawing and painting so I did some sketches I did a couple of paintings really wasn't happy actually got a little bit hot tempered uh, and then when I calmed down, I did it again, and I was quite happy with the last piece that I painted and drew. So, yeah, this this art challenge has provided me with so many wonderful experiences. We've just got one challenge left, so I'm really proud of myself for for stepping up and and uh, and having a go. So over the weekend I took some time out and I had a little solo adventure or artist date. Uh, if you're not familiar with an artist date, it's just simply time you take out each week to play. Uh, it's usually on your own um, and it's a way of nourishing your creativity and imagination. Uh, I'm seeing a lot on Instagram Artists are talking about burnout and I believe that taking a solo adventure or artist state is one of the key things that you can do to support yourself. We have so many um, things on our plate. Um, it is quite difficult as an artist to balance all of the competing demands. The constant pressure I feel to produce content and on a regular basis, it's real. So artist states have helped me stay grounded. So I thought in this video, I would share vignettes of my artist state. It started with exploring mushrooms, led to meeting a new friend, a magpie, and finally resulted in a new creative project in the form of a miniature doll's house. It is mushroom season here and I've been inspired to learn more about the mushrooms of my neighbourhood. This interest was inspired by a book I am reading called The Way Through the Woods. It is a memoir written by Long Li Wung. Long shares her journey after the sudden passing of her husband. Following her fascination of mushrooms, helped her come alive after such a devastating loss. I'm only a few chapters in and I'm really enjoying the book so far. Have you read Long's book, Wonder Weavers? If you have, I'd love you to share your thoughts. Please let me know in the comments below. Before setting out on my artist date, I took some time to learn a little bit about how to identify different types and I found some amazing videos narrated by Alison Bullio, an ecologist who specialises in fungi. I've put links to her videos in the description box below. It had rained heavily the night before so I decided to take my other state close to home. I arrived at my local park where my favourite trees are and found mushroom caps everywhere. As Alison highlights, identifying mushroom species takes time, practice and knowledge. I'm a novice, but already I've picked up a couple of key things. 
I have been visiting the park for several years and have made observations about the relationships between the plants, fungi and animals. Over the years I've noticed different types of mushrooms but didn't know their scientific or common names. However, they share a common characteristic. They all grow in soil and usually close to the eucalyptus trees. While at this stage I'm not interested in picking edible mushrooms, I felt it was important to make sure that I knew how to identify highly toxic species. Before my research, I didn't realize that one of the key ways to identify species is using sight, touch, and smell. When I first went to touch the mushrooms, I felt a bit of resistance. In my mind, a voice screamed, don't touch that. This was the voice of my parents. Rightly so, my parents taught me to be careful around mushrooms. Looking at the stipe, I can see that there's a gill. The hineman or the fertility surface is brown or metallic in colour and I can smell an inky scent. Based on these characteristics, I suspect that these are yellow stainers. These are highly toxic mushrooms and cannot be eaten. The yellow stainer is an introduced species to Australia. Mushrooms play an important role in our ecosystems. As I have learnt, they are the great recyclers. They help maintain the integrity of soils. While researching mushrooms, I came across some really interesting articles about how they are perceived in other cultures. For example, in some Australasian cultures, mushrooms are thought of as ears, and they are closely linked to thunder and rain. Mushrooms as the ears of the earth. I find this idea fascinating. Mushrooms spend much of their life underground, invisible to the human eye. I can imagine their doings and the things that they feel and hear. I'm also fascinated by Victorian ideas about mushrooms. During this period it was thought that fungi belonged to the plant kingdom. Now we realise that they belong to their own realm. Following this long pathway of thought eventually led me home where I began to study depictions of mushrooms in Australian children's literature. The mushroom plays many roles. A seat, an umbrella, or it even metamorphosizes into young children. This exploration has fueled my imagination and I have been drawing and painting mushrooms and making them out of paper, cardboard, deco foam, clay and felt.
After a time, I decided to leave the park and walk down to another one close by. Along the way, I met a new friend, a very inquisitive magpie. After a quick chat and a sharing of seed, I continued on my way. And as I returned home from my adventure, there was a treasure waiting for me on the side of the road. Someone had put out a doll's house. In awe, I looked at the building and wondered for a moment, oh, really, could I do it? I haven't renovated a doll's house before. It's a big undertaking. And yet it seemed that the fairies were putting in a request for a residential upgrade. Perhaps they were looking for something more spacious than the humble dwelling I made for them out of craft sticks and glue three years ago. This little winter house still sits on my windowsill. After a minute or two of deliberation, I picked up the doll's house and carried it home. As you can see, Wonder Weavers, it's a solid structure, but it needs work. So I first need to backfill some surfaces, sand and repaint the exterior. If you've done a similar renovation, I'd love to hear from you. I would especially love recommendations of products you used. So this big fairy renovation will take some time and I look forward to sharing with you my progress. So I hope that by watching this video, it will inspire you to follow fascination, to cultivate your curiosity. Be, sometimes when we follow curiosity, we don't know where it's going to lead, but wonderful things happen. And uh, I invite you to share with me if you do take other states, the ones that you love, uh, or perhaps the little um, the little moments of magic that you experience. Take care, stay well. Ciao.